I got to tell you, with this knife, I have been, ever since I received it, I've been like actively searching for, for crap to cut. So if you're still looking for maybe that perfect or near perfect Warncliffe, you don't want to miss this review. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jay. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. And now, if you don't have any time to do all that uh, research required before your next knife purchase, consider clicking on subscribe because I've already done it for you with knife reviews that get right to the point. This is the QSP Pelican, and these are some specs. Now, these are measurements that I've taken myself. I'll also put them down in the uh, description for you, just in case you want to follow along throughout this review. What do you say we go ahead and do some size comparisons, just so you can get an idea of the true size of knife that we're working with today? And I want to start out with a knife that I believe is probably the, the closest in resemblance to the Pelican, well, the handle anyway, and that of course being the Civivi Backlash. How about a couple spider codes? And we'll start with the PM2, and then the Para 3. Here's a Benchmade and the 940. And lastly, the Bug Out. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you straight away, I really, I like this, I love this knife, and here's why. The blade shape, I mean, it is just a nice, traditional, classic Warncliffe with nothing crazy going on. Even though I do love my four millimeter thick blades, this at three and a half millimeters is still very capable of some harder use. The blade steel, CPM S35VN, and man, I gotta tell you, this is a nice change from all of the D2 blades that, that are out there that we've been seeing quite a bit of. Now the blade finish, I usually prefer a stone wash, but I will say that this satin finish really, really looks good here. And you can kind of see like the, uh, the lines from the grind from machining, very nice. I'm glad QSP went with a flat grind for this. I really think it was the right choice because if this, let's say if it was like hollow grind, that would probably make that tip way too thin and fragile. And take a look at this sharpening choil. Look at that, that the, and the plunge grind, very, very well executed. Using the, the flipper tab, the deployment, the action, it's pretty good. It's not, it's not great, but it's pretty good and we will get into that here in a couple seconds but even without you notice there's no thumb studs so even without the thumb studs you have enough room or at least i do where i'm able to uh slow roll the blade open you know i can pretty much i can pretty much fail the deployment uh, basically anytime that i want but the detent it is it's strong enough where I am unable to shake that blade loose. Since the blade is riding on a ceramic ball bearing uh, pivot, so you know what that means. Yep, do you see that? <laughs> yeah, it dropped shut right out of the friggin' box it was doing this. Look at that. So of course you can also do that, like the thumbnail closure. It's actually a lot of fun to do here with this knife. With my medium sized hands, uh, I can fit all of my fingers, you can see on here, uh, very comfortably on this 4.7 inch long handle. The description of this knife online, it refers to the handle uh, material as flax. Yeah, but don't worry, it is just, it's micarta. So for those of you that, that don't know, flax, all that is, is the, the plant that the linen comes from in order to, to make the micarta. Now, I'm not sure why they listed that way, but I mean, it is just micarta. Apparently now I'm still as greasy as a, as a pubescent uh, teenager because these, these scales, as you can see, they started out as a lighter gray and now they're turning into a 
well, a dark charcoal gray really fast. And I, I mean, I wash my hands like 20 times a day, but yeah, it's changing fast. There is some really good jimping on the, here on the, on the flipper tab and on the blade spine. And I really like, look at how far that jimping extends out. Oh yeah, I really like that. So that just pretty much accommodates so many different uh, hand sizes and you can place your thumb wherever you want. The pocket clip, titanium. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, it's not it's not a true deep carry clip if you can. Yep, you see it right there. So it's going to come to right about here like if this was your pocket. But you know what? That's okay. I I really do think that it's it's deep enough and it is going to be by the way uh tip up only. Now the Pelican does have you can see it has a a, a back spacer, so it's going to be partially open construction. And if you take a look, hopefully you can see on the inside, look at all of that skeletonization going on. Yeah, it is actually, it's on, they did it on both liners. Yeah, quite a bit. So in an effort to reduce the weight, let's see how that affects our knife. Wow, that's, that's not bad. I mean, I think that that's 4.4 ounces. I, th I really do think that that's acceptable for a knife of this size. I mean, 4.7 4 inch handle, 3.6 blade, that's not bad. So that's gonna be roughly the equivalent. One, two, three, four, five, about five AA batteries. Oh man, just a little bit heavier than the Civivi Backlash, which by the way, I have previously reviewed. So if you're interested, at the end of the video, yeah, look up to that corner, go ahead and click on that card and you'll be able to watch my full review of this Backlash. Now, unfortunately, there are a couple things that I, that I dislike about the, uh, the Pelican and we're gonna start with the, with the liners. You can see it's just, yeah, it's just got the uh, standard liners. I really, would have liked to see maybe nested because that would help to kind of to slim down this handle thickness which is get this 0 0.60 i mean that's that's approaching like griptilian thickness no it's not awful but it's it's thick and as long as we're talking about the liner already Hopefully you can see that it is, at least on my example, this liner is locking up. It's, it's kind of it's kind of early for me. Um, I mean, you're looking at barely like, like 10%. And not only that, man, was I bummed to see this when I opened the box. Yeah, it is. You see, it's a little bit off centered. I mean, I should be able to fix it, but I wanted to, to show you the knife first, like unchanged, you know, exactly as I received it and I received it off center. Now the pocket clip, it's going to be just for righties only. Yeah. No, no lefty love from QSP. I, and I don't like that. And while the Pelican is in your pocket, this is going to take up a bit of room because closed. So at the widest point, 1.48 inches closed width. Yes, it is under an inch and a half, but not by much. So that's gonna take up a little bit of room. And lastly, for what I don't like is that for the life of me, I don't know why companies still, when they when they manufacture a Warncliffe, they put a flipper tab on it. Be all that does now so when you're cutting on a flat surface, it's just gonna be the very tip of that sharpened edge that's gonna make contact. So imagine if, and I'm a flipper tab guy, I love flippers, but imagine if the flipper tab was, was not there and they had thumb studs. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. I do have a question for you. All I would like to know is if, now do you own, do you own, do you own any uh, Warncliffe knives? And, if so, 
which one is your favorite, let me know down in the comment section below. And now who says you can't pierce stuff with a, with a worn cliff blade? Dang, that works really well. Look at that. I mean, that's going through it like nothing. Now you see why I'm just like tearing apart the house looking for crap to cut. Now, if you're not a fan of the, of the gray micarta, that's okay because QSP has you covered. This is also available in a uh, tan micarta and there's also one with a, a partially black coated blade. I believe there's one that has the flats that's just in black and then there's another that has the, uh, the grind is in black. I normally could care less about the packaging, but this, the presentation here from QSP is actually quite nice. I mean, look at this. It kind of just pulls out like a drawer, like a dresser drawer or something. And look at that. Yep. We do have a uh, QSP pouch and, oh yeah, there is a polishing rag in there. Very nice. And then they've got this deal. I, I don't know what the heck this is. <laughs> I don't know, in case you want to, what, wear it on your wrist for fast access to your knife? This could be your Merce. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get that, but whatever. I mean, you get the bag, so that's nice. Thank you. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, let's use that rag, because this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Now, I had purchased, I purchased mine. This came from uh, White Mountain Knives, who they happen to be like one of the only retailers uh, that actually carry QSP knives. So I will, I'll make sure I'll include a link to White Mountain Knives and be sure to use, I have a coupon code for you. Yes, if you just enter in all lowercase, two words, lefty love, that will take 10% off of your entire order. So that's great, Jay, but 10% off of what? Well, $117. I honestly, I feel that that is more than fair for what you're getting. And let me remind you what you're getting. S35VN blades, ceramic ball bearing pivot, micarta scales, titanium pocket clip. And don't forget, you know, you're going to take 10% off of that $117 when you get it from White Mountain Knives. So hey, if you enjoyed this video and you got any value from it, maybe just leave me a, a, a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you haven't already, go ahead and click on that subscribe. Hey, thanks for watching, and I will see you at the next video. You guys take care.